A man cannot serve two masters. Exploring Luther Goodlick's notes on the theory of organization. Hi, I'm Jason Espinoza, and this is my presentation for MPA 510 at California Baptist University. Today, we're going to be looking at Luther Goodlick's seven principle theory paused court. Try saying that five times. <laughs> Good luck. We're also going to be looking at the theoretical strengths and weaknesses of this theory and a practical application in a modern day industry. And then rounding this presentation out with a so pause the court. What does it mean? Let's break down Gulick's seven point acronym. It begins with planning, followed by organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting, and budgeting. As a manager, it is our role to accomplish the purpose set for the business enterprise. While organizing and arranging a team to ensure that we meet the defined objective. While through staffing, establishing those training methods and methodologies while bringing in individuals to maximize favorable work conditions. While giving specific orders and instructions and serving as the leader of the business enterprise. While through coordinating, ensuring that the interrelated parts are working together, finding the streamlined approach to solving the complex. While utilizing data information to ensure that through records and research, individual subordinates can come through and identify maximum efficiencies for work outflows. While ensuring through fiscal planning and accountability, maximum control is being measured by one step toward the goal of success. The difficult challenge that we find with Posicorp is that individuals within a work environment might find themselves struggling between multiple superiors. Again, back to the principle of no man can serve two masters. As said here in Matthew 6.24, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. Yet he cannot serve God and mammon, which that really represents money or, or greed. Uh, Gulick demonstrates that in a relation of a workman is subject to orders from several superiors will be confused, inefficient, and irresponsible. However, a workman subject to orders from but one superior may be methodical, efficient, and responsible. That's key to this pause the corp. Now, the principles enables the manager to prepare a sequence of essential tasks. Uh, within a span of control that limits the number of people individual may supervise. So while dividing the work into key roles to ensure, as you see here, the red being an individual manager or leader and the globe representing the overall goal and each individual has a component to meet that goal, it's a, a function of that um, success to ensure that individuals have the ability to coordinate that work to again to ensure that each individual is a contributing member um, to ma to maximize um, the outcome of, of the work desire. Equally, as we highlighted in the directing approach, the unity of command is key important to have a superior that is guiding that team to eliminate any confusion or inefficiencies lost as a result of multiple superiors giving direction that could uh, take out of arrangement the necessary outcome. A manager's role is also to look at the organizational patterns, to identify those trends, to look at those elements that could have some effect within what takes place in the organization. And that really is what's said to be one of the challenges and the, the weaknesses of Podsicorp. Um, really, uh, as stated by Herbert Alexander Simon, um, values are a simplification of administration. His criticisms uh, were mostly centered around the unity of command and the span of control. Um, he stated that every so often it is compulsory for a subordinate to take directives or guidance from more than one cause. Um, and Luther Gulick's uh, specialized concept tried to accomplish that. However, as you can see within this uh, uh, image here, this cartoon, really what Gulick's idea was, yes, we're going to meet maximum efficiency. You have individuals who are moving things forward. However, they might not be looking at the core effective efficiencies or core elements that might have an ability to maximize maximize that efficiency. And so it, it really did um, separate out um, that capability. 
So in looking at how this applies into a modern day environment, um, I think education is probably one place where we really see um, Golik's uh, plan come out. You have a pre-plan, you have planning, you have implementation. Um, you're developing the components necessary uh, to evaluate and improve that plan. For school districts, they cannot just simply identify a need. They have to come up with a, a planning cycle. They have to identify what they're trying to mitigate. Uh, they need to prepare for it. They need to respond to that they need to recover for those factors uh, equally so they need to look at a timeline they need to develop um, an idea its development how it's going to be implemented some of those core functions in the concentration it's looking at uh, Gulick's role of the division of work uh, coordination within the organization a span of control one master you have school organizations that are working under a superintendent the superintendent's care court fundamental expectation is to establish the measures, the metrics that will be uh, developed to meet the educational goals of the community in which they serve. And looking at Gulick himself, looking at Pazdakor, right? You look at the word, the way it breaks down. It's a very uh, measured approach to ways of ensuring maximum efficiency. However, the core measure to this is that you cannot serve two masters. That's where Gulick's theory really came into difficult challenges is that within a work environment, you and I and others are familiar with um, multiple chiefs or what do they call that? Uh, cooks in the kitchen, right? And so as employees, we do try to ensure that we're doing our jobs right. We're doing them to the maximum efficiency. Uh, Gulick developed the uh, roadmap, if you will, that ensured the individuals could identify that. However, what he failed to understand is that within that workforce, <clears throat> individuals will become superior um, through longevity, seniority, or experience. Uh, those are factors that may not have been truly judged. And so therefore, individuals may be serving multiple masters in diminishing the maximum efficiency of the organization. And again, Matthew 624, um, I think really clearly states um, how you cannot serve both God and money. So essentially, that's my presentation. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, and uh, I thank you for your time and uh, look forward to again.